Welcome to Fearless Thinkers, the BTS podcast. My name is Misami Cookson, and our host is Rick Cheatham. Today, he is joined by Ignacio Vaccaro, who leads our Strategy Alignment and Implementation Center of Excellence for Europe. Hey, Rick, can you give us a preview? Sure, Misami. It was a uh, great chat with Ignacio. We, we went a little down the road of the current business environment and how it's almost becoming cliche to say that it's unprecedented and how difficult it is for people to have confidence in their decision making as they used to. And also what tools are available for individuals and teams to have a little bit more confidence and actually even build some business acumen capability uh, so that they can be more successful in today's world. Sounds great. Let's jump in. Hey, Ignacio, thanks so much for taking the time to chat with us today. My pleasure, Rick. Really happy to be here. So I know in your role, you get to work with many different types of clients. I'm curious what you're hearing today as being some of the top priorities or challenges. That's right, Rick. I'm really fortunate in that I get to see and hear lots of things. And what is coming through right now is a couple of things. Right now, there's a lot of conversation around dealing with a huge amount of complexity and change coming through in different guises. You know, we see a lot of instability in the world. We see a lot of challenges around things like supply chains and a lot of inflationary pressure. So that filters through into the very, very short term, but also begins to impact the strategy process and, and the long term for, for our clients. So quite an interesting time, quite a very challenging time. It sounds like it. Given all of the circumstances you just described, what does that turn into potentially for leaders within an organization that prioritize different things than they usually do? Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite an interesting question because what we typically see is that it takes a lot more from leaders to be effective and efficient in organizations. It takes both the knowledge of the business, it takes the nuts and bolts of the organization, how the whole enterprise value uh, creation process works, but it takes also... A behavioral component. It takes, you know, who they are as leaders, how they show up, how they enthuse their teams. It takes their ability to take on a huge amount of complexity and synthesize it into the right action. So the demands placed on leaders and therefore what organizations are focusing on is, is very broad in terms of the technicalities. So what people do and increasingly you know, everything that's related to how they do it, how they deal with change, how they deal with transformation, how they deal with a very dynamic environment and, and, you know, flex their strategies accordingly. Right. Being able to flex strategy and sort through all of the data that's coming to me and narrow that down to a, to a quick set of these are the best things to do right now uh, would be incredibly important skills to have. And so what's your best advice? For, for clients that find themselves in these kinds of circumstances? With these clients, what we've typically been doing, particularly in the last 12 to 18 months, is, is to focus on experiences and, and programs that cut across a number of things. You know, we need to focus on the fundamentals of the business. That's inescapable. That's what we've been doing, what we've been using to support organizations. But equally, we're focusing on things that are more on the behavioral side, on who they are as leaders. And so, we work with experiences that put leaders in an environment that recreates the pressures and the challenges and the dynamics in their markets with their clients. So all the complexity that comes through the market. Uh, and we also do that in an environment that we can observe and we can see who they are as leaders and how they are tackling those challenges. And we take that and that safe environment and that's the perfect vehicle to identify the challenges and also coach old mindsets and help them evolve into new ones. We refer to these setups as leader labs because it brings leaders into an environment that replicates the key challenges, facilitates observation and coaching and can move them forward. Uh, and, and these experiences typically show a reality that elevates their gaze, elevates them beyond their silo, which is one of the the recurring challenges that we see is to adopt a much more enterprise kind of thinking, enterprise mindset, looking across the whole system rather than the part of the organization where you have specialized. So let's dig in just a little bit deeper, if you don't mind. It's almost cliche at this point when to hear people say things like, it's, it's not only what you do, but it's also how you do it. I think in these types of engagements that you're talking about, we often say we catch people in the act of being themselves. Um, 
Could you give me just the next level of detail on how something like that works? Yeah, absolutely. And you're right. You know, it sounds a little bit cliche when we say, you know, the how you do things. But it's, it's actually quite real. It's actually quite uh, interesting to see how sometimes the strategic intent of what leaders do goes in one direction and perhaps who they are and the behavior they are displaying goes in a different one. So if the coach, just to give you an example, is for organizations to work more collaboratively because there's a strategic imperative to say, work better at a global scale, pull resources and pull expertise from different parts of the organization, perhaps pockets of excellence that need to be now used across, uh, across the entire company and you match that with a mindset that is not very collaboratively, a mindset that doesn't really play to that idea, or behaviors that are much more about defending a specific part or a small kingdom within the organization, you can see how those two things don't go together. So what we try and do is to identify the situations in which that comes through, showing in a very context-rich environment, Well, we can say this is the mindset and this is what perhaps is stopping us from realizing our full potential. And once we've identified that mindset, that limitation, that behavior, we can address it, we can help leaders move and evolve it. And that's the key of, you know, the what you do and the how you do it, is to make sure that there's consistency and that the behaviors correspond with the strategic imperative that you're trying to play to. Great. Thanks for that. You've used a word now, a phrase around mindset and building mindset. Help me a little bit with how we are impacting or how we are shifting mindset. Yeah, it's a it's a great observation, Rick, because mindset really is, you know, the way you see the world, the attitudes you bring to 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 your life, to work, to your organization. And that's ultimately what sits underneath observable behavior. So it's going to condition the way you behave and the things you do and the way you react and the way you act around others. So having that mindset is about identifying you know, how you see the world. What is your perception of the world? What is your perception of your role within the organization? And making sure that we provide the tools for people, for leaders, to understand how that mindset is affecting the way they're getting things done. So they have the confidence and they come in equipped with the right mindset to, to support the, their strategy, to support their, their execution. Cool. And I guess one of the things that I can't help but do is go all the way back to the beginning of our conversation, past patterns allowed us to kind of at least have an idea of of where to go next. Um, That security seems to be gone for so many people in their organizations. So given the pressure to perform short term, obviously makes it very difficult for uh, folks to say, the best answer for me is to take all my leaders and uh, and focus them on development and practice versus leaving these people in their chairs and getting them to get today's work done. How would you respond to that or how can you help make sense of that? Yeah, and it, it, it is something that you know we would have heard from many of our clients and in lots of conversations that we have. The way I typically speak to clients about this is we recognize that there's a lot of decisions that need to happen in the short term. This is just the world we live in. It's moving really fast. I like the way you put it in that we don't have that comfort that perhaps we would have had before in terms of relying on what we've done before, relying on experience. You need to be so quick on your feet right now to to drive a strategy, to run a business. And we need to reconcile that with the longer term picture for any organization. These organizations obviously need to deal with the short term and need to meet those challenges. But at the same time, they need to deliver long term value. And it's about reconciling the two. It's about understanding what are the big bets that we need to do today and what are perhaps the trade offs and the decisions that we need to make right now to make sure that we cut through the challenges of today the capabilities that you bring, the challenges in the industry and and the wider ecosystem. The beauty of what we do is that all of those ingredients, we can model them. We can model them and build them into our simulations as a platform to explore those challenges and give leaders an opportunity to, to see that action and reaction and experience the potential outcomes of those decisions. 
So what we do becomes particularly powerful because we can model those situations, we can engineer them to trigger the right discussion, the most valuable discussions and drive the most important learnings uh, and actionable insights for leaders to start taking those lessons and begin to apply them back into their businesses. Fantastic. Well, hey, I really appreciate, um, again, you taking the time to share with us what you're hearing and seeing and potentially what we could do about it. So thanks. Thank you, Rick. If you'd like to stay up to date on the latest from the Fearless Thinkers podcast, please subscribe. Links to all of the relevant content discussed in today's podcast are in the show notes, or you can always reach us at bts.com. Thanks again.